YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review, and today I'm very excited to check it out. Walk on Fire from Green Couch Games. This is for two to four players, ages eight plus. will take about 30 minutes to play, and then Walk on Fire, you're going to be taking your spatula, and you're going to be trying to flip cards to make various different dishes. Then you're going to be picking out ingredients, you're going to be chopping cards in this dexterity set collection-y type of light family weight game i've enjoyed everything i've played from green couch games so far does this continue on that trend let's open it up and i'll tell you what i think about it all right then we're gonna take a look at what you're gonna get inside of walk on fire so first and foremost we're gonna handy dandy rule booklet uh it's about one page double-sided full color full of pictures illustrations examples it's very well done it should have you up and running pretty smoothly i feel like most of the questions you have are probably going to be somewhere in the rule booklet so thumbs up on the rule booklet so inside of walk on fire you're going to get cards cards and more cards there's going to be three main kinds of cards you're going to have each player is going to get a cute little spatula card, which they will be using to flip over cards like that. That wasn't a very good flip. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later. You're going to get ingredient cards. And this is ma the majority of the cards you're going to get, which will have either starches or meats or vegetables or condiments on them. And all of these will do various different things. I will talk about those later. But as you can see, those are the ingredient cards. That's the majority of the game. Last but not least, everyone is going to get this handy dandy little cheat sheet card, which will give you the order of operations you'll do on your turn. And then also the number of ingredient cards that are in the game and also how many points those are going to get you at the end of the game listed over there. Very useful little cheat sheet card once you know how it works. So in Walk on Fire, what you're trying to do is you're trying to make various different dishes so you can score the most points at the end of the game. Let's go through a turn sequence and show you how it works. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to set it up like so. You're going to have your walk of food right here. You're going to have extra cards set over to the side. And on your first thing you're going to do is you're going to stir fry. You're going to take your spatula and you're going to try and flip over cards twice. Now the goal here is to keep the cards inside of the walk. Because if cards go outside of the walk, aka outside of this big pile of cards, they're not touching any of the cards, then you can't pick them up except for the green pepper, which is the one bad card in the game. So, I'll show you how that works. We just flip it over, and we'll go, that was a terrible first flip, but that would still count as our first flip. Second flip, go, we're going to get a big old pile here, just bam. So, that was also a terrible flip. So, that would be, our first action would be to stir fry. Now, we are going to pick up, and as it says right here, you're going to pick up two separate ingredients. Now, the green pepper is a special ingredient. It is worth negative five at the end of the game, and when it, turn, when it first appears, you have to take it. So... We must pick this up, but the great thing about the green pepper is it allows you to take an additional stir fry action and get an additional card. So even though you are getting a bad card, you are in, in essence getting another turn kind of. So this time we'll flip over that and that's a much better flip right there. So now we once again get to take two ingredients. So we'll take this uh, mushroom right here because the mushroom works as a little set collection one where if you have a set of three mushrooms, you get 18. And then we're also going to take this little garlic right here. So boom. Now the garlic is yet another special card because when you take the first garlic on your turn, you get to stir fry again. So I'm in actuality going to get four cards this first turn, which is not too shabby at all. Also, the garlic is a condiment, which means later in the game, you'll be able to mix it with meat to get you more points. So this it actually hasn't turned out to be too bad of a turn because as I'll show you later, the green pepper is not the worst card in the world. It's the worst card in the game, but you can still get points from the green pepper. So now I'll come over here, I'll flip it over, and we got, look at that, <clears throat> we got ourselves another mushroom, perfect. So I will take that mushroom right here. So the question is, how do I know that I can take various different cards? Obviously, you can take cards if you can see them, but the rules are uh, the cards have to have at least one corner that you can see, and you must be able to see at least some part of the middle. So for instance, let's move this. Uh, that would mean we could not take this card right here. Even if we knew that it was a mushroom, since we can't see any part of the middle, we could not take this green card right there. So that was the first part of my first turn. I have done my stir fry. I did my pickup action by getting the ingredients right here. And then last but not least, I am going to chop. I'm going to chop two of the cards like so and attempt to cover up something out here. Maybe I don't want my opponent to have that third mushroom. So I might try and chop, chop. I failed at it. But anywho, I would chop two more cards onto there. 
you're going to continue to do this. You're going to rinse, wash, and repeat until the ingredient supply is completely gone. Once that happens, you are going to figure out the optimal way to uh, maneuver your cards that you have down here and score the most points. <clears throat> so let's go over real quick what all the different cards in the game do. First, we'll go over the meats, and then we'll, we'll go over the main dishes last. So the meats, the chicken, are a little bit unique. They're only going to score you two points. However, unlike every other card in the game, if there were, say, two, three, four chickens out there, you could pick up all those chickens at the same time. Pick up all. Pork's going to score you three points, and at the end of the game, whoever is the most is also going to get a plus five. Shrimp, very simple, just a hard four points for each shrimp you have. Moving on to the other side, we have broccoli, which is worth five points, which is very good. However, whoever is the most at the end of the game is going to get negative ten points. Mushroom, once again, we already showed you that. You get a set of three out of six of them, you're going to get 18 points. Onions, there's only seven onions in the game, but if you're able to get five of them, you're going to get 35 points. So onions could be big 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 last but not least we have the green peppers which are negative five on the vegetables however as we mentioned there are ways to mitigate that for instance if you can mix the green pepper with the chili pepper and there's only four in the entire game you are going to get 10 points also the chili pepper has an additional special ability if you don't combine it or the uh yeah, the chili pepper does. Whereas you can just get rid of a, a chili pepper and then pick up plus one ingredient from the wok. So you could get an extra ingredient from the wok. So the chili pepper is a versatile one that if you see it, you pretty much always want to pick it up. Now, garlic is going to, if you combine it with meat, we already mentioned that it gives you an additional ingredient you can pick up. But if you combine it with meat, then you're going to multiply that meat by three. So for instance, if you had garlic shrimp, boom, that'd be 12 points right there which is a good chunk of points. Last but not least, you have your main dishes, your noodles and your rice. And in order to make the noodle, you're going to have to have the noodle, the meat, the vegetable, and a condiment, which is kind of tricky to get all those together. But if you can, you're going to get 25 points. Rice, you get the rice, the meat, and the vegetables, and you're going to get yourself 15 points. You're going to tally up the points, who has the most, and they will be the winner of Walk on Fire. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, walk on fire from Green Couch Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, games are not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. Two to four players are a very restricted player count. Also, this is a lightweight family game, and most times on your turn, your decision is going to be made for you. Like, you know, um, it sounds like there's like this complex aspect of, oh, which ingredients do I take? But in actuality, most of the time, you're not going to have that many great options to pick for the ingredients. And there will be one that's like, oh, yeah, I absolutely want that ingredient. And then, yeah, I guess I, I want that ingredient. So if you're looking for more meaty choices, this one's not going to be for you. But I, you probably could have figured that out because it is a dexterity game, which is going to be another con. This is a dexterity game. Now, it's not like your typical dexterity game. I don't feel like because you're great at, you know, using the spatula, you're going to have a leg up on this in this game i feel like the dexterity is just kind of tacked in, tacked in onto the game but in a good way i do like the dexterity element of the game obviously which is you know a main element to the game um any other cons i have with the game you know when you first look at the rule card you know don't let people look at this until you've explained the rules because they'll be like oh my gosh what is all this what does all this mean i'm so confused but once you know what you're doing it, it really does help any other cons i have with the game you know no I can't really think of too many cons that I have with this game. And moving forward, you know, I'm going to say this about Green Couch Games. They're not one of those publishers that I think of when I think of my favorite game publishers. And I'm like, oh, we're my favorite game publisher. They'll be like, oh, we got Fantasy Flight Games. Maybe we've got Eagle Griffin Games. Maybe we've got Tasty Minstrel Games. Maybe we've got this company or that company. I don't think about them. But then I look at my shelves and I'm like, oh, Jurassic, Jurassic Attack and the Treehouse game and the upcoming uh, the Ice Cream game and this game. Their games just continue to get on my shelf. And I just have enjoyed every single game that I've played from them. And this continues on that trend. It's lightweight. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. It's family weight. But at the same time, it has enough meat that it's still a game night filler game. I could easily bust this out playing with non-gamers. And I could easily bust this out playing with my game night group. That is a hard balancing act to complete. And I feel like Walk on Fire and most of the other Green Couch games is able to do that. So what do I like about Walk on Fire? Obviously, game, I like the dexterity element. I like the artwork. Uh, the rules are well done. The components feel nice. The cards are perfectly serviceable. Uh, I, I, I love the fact that they come in these little compact boxes. They don't feel the need to make the box any bigger than it needs to be, which I really wish other game companies would take a note on. And 
Overall, it is a rock solid little package that I definitely can recommend if you're in the market for a lightweight filler game that has a little bit of dexterity, if you're in the market for a great family game, or heck, even as a gateway game, I think you can still sneak this one in there. So that is Walk on Fire from Green Couch Games, yet another rock solid game from them. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below. In the comments below, let me know, do you use, when you go to the Chinese buffet, do you actually do the, um, that's, that's a very inappropriate word that just popped into my head. Do you actually use the, uh, 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 the, the hibachi? Hibachi! Oh my gosh, the word I was thinking of was so terrible. The hibachi part of the grill, where it's like, it's kind of weird where they have all that raw food over there, and there's that guy just kind of standing there with the tip jar. Do you actually use that, or do you just steer clear and go towards the Chinese buffet? Me personally, you know, I normally don't have cash on me, and I feel awkward to have this guy just stand there and cater to me without tipping him. Every once in a while, I'll go over there and get the hibachi, but most of the time, I steer clear of it and just stay towards the buffet. But what do you do? Do you get the hibachi when you go to the Chinese buffet? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.